Hello everyone. So my name is Shabun Agarwal and my role number is 11 and this is my video presentation for the hydrocarbon engineering course. Yeah. And the contents of the uh, presentation of or this video presentation will be the universal oil product characterization factor, which I will explain with the help of an example, followed by the Conrad's in carbon residue, where I will also explain the experimental procedure for the same. Then we'll proceed towards the water and sediment content. So this will be the final topic of the of this video presentation. So let's get started with it. So the universal oil product characterization factor. So from the very beginning of the petroleum industry, it was desired to define a characterization parameter based on the measurable parameters. For example, the physical properties of the crude like the density and viscosity to classify and identify the hydrocarbon types. So in the mid 1930s, there was a scientist named Watson who with along with his colleagues developed the same characterization factor. So the Watson characterization factor is one of the oldest characterization factor originally defined by the Watson and its and his colleagues of the universal oil product in mid 1930s. And for this reason, this parameter is sometimes called the UOP characterization factor and is defined using the below equation. So the uh, equation states such that KW is equal to Tb to the power 1 by 3 over G, where Tb is the mean average boiling point in degree Rankine and G is the specific gravity of the crude sample at 60 degree Fahrenheit at 60 degree Fahrenheit. Yeah, and KW is the UOP characterization factor. So in the upcoming slides, we will study how, how we can calculate the mean average boiling point in degree Rankine. And as we have studied earlier, that the specific gravity of the crude, it can be calculated using the API equation. So we'll be using the same to calculate the specific gravity. Yeah, let's proceed. So the purpose of defining this factor was to classify the types of hydrocarbons in petroleum mixtures. So depending on the value of Watson characterization factors, crude oils can be classified as. So if the uh, Watson characterization factor is in the range of 11 in 12.9, so the crude oil is paraffinic. And if it is in the range of 10 and 11, it is naphthenic. Mm -hmm. And if it is less than 10, then the crude is aromatic. So now, if we are given the ASTM D86 distillation, so the uh, in order to calculate the mean average boiling point, we first need to calculate the volume average boiling point. So the volume average boiling point, it can be calculated by taking the average of the five boiling point temperatures at 10, 30, 50, 70, and 90, per 90 volume percent distilled. So uh, using the equation this, we will be able to calculate the volume average boiling point and the uh, temperature values used in the above equation are in degree Fahrenheit. So the mean average boiling point, it can be calculated using the below uh, equation, which is mean average boiling point is equals to uh, volume average boiling point minus delta, where ln delta, where delta, it can be calculated from this equation where ln delta is equals to minus 0 0.94402 minus 0 0.00865 times volume average boiling point minus 32 to the power 0 0.6667 plus 2.99791 uh, into uh, slope to the power 0 0.0333 where slope uh, it is the uh, slope of the line uh, which is joining the points of the uh, uh, which is joining the point of the temperature of the 90% uh, distilled volume and the 10% distilled volume. So we will be having the slope. So using the uh, equation this, we will be able to calculate the slope for the line and by putting this value in this equation and uh, volume average boiling point value, we will be able to calculate the delta. And that's how we will be calculating the mean average boiling point, which is equals to Tb. And by using the previous equation of the characterization factor, we will be able to calculate the uh, characterization factor. So now we'll be uh, understanding this with the help of an example. So let's proceed further. So the example it follows is 
we have to calculate the mean average boiling point of the petroleum fraction if the api gravity of the fraction is 62 and uh, we will be calcul and then we have to calculate the watson characterization factor so in this column we are provided the volume percent distilled 0 10 30 50 70 90 and 95 as we have studied previously that the values 10 30 50 and 70 till 90 these are only useful to us so we will be dealing with these values only and the temperature is uh, here is in degree celsius so it should be noted that firstly in order to calculate the mean uh, the volume average boiling point we will have to cal uh, we will have to convert the temperature from degree celsius to degree fahrenheit so for each we will be uh, converting it to degree fahrenheit uh, for 10 to 90 percent distill and then we will be calculating the volume uh, average boiling point so this is uh, yeah so this is uh, is so the distill the d86 distillation temperatures are converted to degree fahrenheit as i have told you earlier and the volume uh, average boiling point is obtained from the equation this so these are the uh, temperatures that have been converted 54 uh, degree celsius is equals to 129.2 degree fahrenheit and therefore the converting the uh, all from 10 to 90 will have the different values and by taking the average will get the uh, volume average boiling point as equal to 224.4 degree fahrenheit then we will also calculate the slope of the line because we need to calculate the del delta and thereby we will be able to calculate the uh, mean average boiling point so the slope is uh, as i have told the temperature uh, at the 90 percent distilled volume minus the temperature at the 10 percent distilled volume over 90 minus 10 gives the value this so proceeding further so ln delta <coughs> ln delta now putting the value of a uh, slope and uh, the uh, uh, volume average boiling point in the equation of ln delta we have this equation so calculating this we get the value of delta is equals to uh, 18.279 and so this is in degree fahrenheit delta is in degree fahrenheit yeah and the mean average boiling point is equals to a volume average boiling point minus delta which gives 206.1 degree fahrenheit or 96.7 degree celsius so this is our mean average boiling point which is equals to tb now using the equation of uh, uh, characterization factor which was uh, so first we will uh, also calculate the specific gravity because the uh, in the characterization equation we have two terms the first one was the uh, boiling uh, mean average boiling point and second one was the uh, specific gravity so from the api equation specific gravity can be calculated as specific gravity is equals to uh, 141.4 plus 62 it was given to us the api plus 101.5 so the specific gravity at 60 degree celsius is 60 degree fahrenheit we got this now the watson characterization equation uh, factor from the above equation it will be equal to kw is equals to so as i have told the tb it should in this equation it should be in degree rankin so we'll convert degree fahrenheit to degree rankin and the conversion factor is we'll be adding 460 to degree fahrenheit so 206.1 plus 460 to the power 1 by 3 over specific gravity and we'll have the value of 11.94 so this is the characterization factor as we have studied in the previous uh, uh, slides that if the characterization factor is then is in the range of 11.5 to 12 then the crude oil is paraffinic so it can also be stated that our uh, crude is paraffinic here yeah so it is paraffinic let's proceed further to the so i hope that this topic is uh, clear to you and we'll proceed to the next topic now which is the uh, Conradson carbon residue so the Conradson carbon residue it is also uh, known by two other names which is the con carbon or ccr so it is a laboratory test which is used to provide an indication of the coke forming tendencies of an oil 
if it best measures the amount of carbonaceous residue remaining after the oil evaporation and pyrolysis or we can say that this method is uh, is used to find out the amount of carbon residue present after pyrolysis of the fuel sample so first we'll have the fuel sample then secondly we'll perform the pyrolysis over it and the amount of carbon residue which was left it will be known as the Kondratsen carbon residue so in general the test is applicable to the petroleum products which are uh, relatively non volatile or which decomposes on distillation at atmospheric pressure so the phrase uh, Kondratsen carbon residue and its common name can uh, refer either to the test or the numerical values obtained from it now we'll be proceeding towards the experimental procedure for this test so it is the uh, firstly we'll have to take the 5 gram of moisture free fuel in the iron crucible of the apparatus the iron crucible and we we will have to then place the iron crucible inside the center of the skid more crucible of the apparatus now both the crucibles are then placed in the heat oven which was initially at 500 degrees celsius and then we'll will have to increase the temperature of the oven from by 10 degrees celsius per minute for the next 15 minutes and to and then the pyrolysis of the sample will be performed this is how this pyrolysis is performed finally after 15 minutes we will shut off the oven and then when the temperature of the oven reaches 150 degrees celsius we will take the crucible out and place it in the desiccator to let it uh, cool till the temperature reaches 30 degrees celsius finally after the temperature reaches 30 degrees celsius the carbon residue is weighed weighted in, in, a, in a precision weighing balance and mass percentage of the carbon residue is calculated using this equation where percentage carbon residue is equals to a times 100 over ws as is the carbon residue uh, in grams that we have uh, weighted and ws is the initial weight of the sample so this is how the percentage carbon residue in the initial in the sample it can be calculated so this was our second topic our third and the final topic is uh, water and sediment contents so when crude oil is produced from oil reservoir it contains some water and suspended particles from the reservoir so when contents varies widely uh, so these uh, the water contents in a in a sample it varies widely from one reservoir to another and it might present in a higher amount in older reservoir or if the oil production is added by injecting water using technologies <clears throat> because crude oil contracts are based on the net dry oil no one wants to pay uh, crude oil pricing for barrel of water precise analysis of the crude oil sample to detect the water content is critical in the refining because no one wants to uh, no one wants to invest their money in the crude oil which does contain a lot amount of water therefore this uh, the uh, this test um, in which we have to calculate the water and sediment content in the uh, in the crude it is very uh, necessary or it can be said it is one of the critical steps in the refining refinery so the water and sediment contents of the oil can create equipment uh, corrosion and processing issues or also there are several issues like uh, the uh, equipment corrosion and processing issues due to the water and sediment contents present in the crude oil therefore it is also be needed to remove these first so that our the our the units of our refinery do, do not get deroded so the oil refineries buy crude that meets a certain basic sediment and water criteria or they do produce the crude oil using the desalting and the dehyd uh, dehydration process units lower than the uh, the basic sediment and water content to significantly low and accept acceptable amounts or some of the refineries uses the combination of both <clears throat> So basic sediment and water is frequently measured using some standards so it can be uh, measured e either using the ASTM method D4007 or using the API chapter 10.4 so these are the standards which are used to measure the amount of uh, uh, basic sediments and water content <clears throat> 
these producers entail uh, mixing equal amounts of crude oil uh, in solvent and then with the help of centrifugal forces the solids are separated from the mixture water or sediment solids that are present uh, in a crude oil batch can be measured independently using more exact procedures than bs uh, oh, sorry the basic sediment and water so it can be measured using the more precise methods also <clears throat> So this was all from my side. I hope uh, this was uh, a clear video uh, and you have all got the basic knowledge of the topics that I'm, that I'm been trying to explain. So that's all from my side and thank you so much. Yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you so much.